And one of our favourite subjects on this channel, Sonny, is DACT. So do you have any great stories of fighting, you know, the Mirage against other types? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned, it's not a it's not a dog fighter of the present time. So uh, we've uh, done DACT with the Viper uh, as well as the um, F7 PG and the F7 Ps, which is once again a variant of the MiG-21. Um, so it, it fared decently well with the latter two, but the Viper was a very different platform. It had Turn rate capability of extremely high G's in circumstances. Uh, if I remember a few scenarios, um, uh, in one of the fights, once again, I was trailing behind an F-16, and as soon as I was about to bring my nose onto him, I could literally see the F-16 pivot in front of me <laughs> and go head on and go vertical. And I wow. was the only thing I could do is I could see the aircraft going up and away uh, because the the Mirage didn't have the turn rate capability, a sustained turn rate. It, it was really well good to do with a, a turn, aim, fast, short, and then unload, exit, come back for another pitch back into the fight. So it was there. But in a sustained turn rate, uh, the F-16 was uh, was completely overpowering the Mirage. So that was one. I could literally see the F-16 pivot in front of me and give wow. me a head-on and fly away. Wow. Um, the other, there was, we were another 2v1 DACT. The, the Viper was 1v2 Mirages. So the Viper was tagging the other uh, Mirage from its tail and taking the shot. I was settling behind it as well. I was at extremely low energy state, just about to bring my nose onto the Viper, and I could see the Viper going wings level, max afterburners, and going vertical and wow. getting away from us. And we couldn't do anything because the energy levels were low. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was doing this, the Viper took a complete loop and came behind me, took my shot, and we disengaged and knocked it off. Considering domains, it's not built for the present day DACT. Mm -hmm. uh, it's excellent for the role that it carries, which is once again um, now into standoff weapon capability and A2 ground deliveries. So in them F-16 uh, fights, would you, be, would you personally be using a lot of um, afterburner? Yes, absolutely. The thrust to weight ratio was and is very important to maintain against the F-16. Um, we always used to do a, uh, used to do a, uh, a coming fast, engage, short offset. If you can take a shot, take a shot. Otherwise, unload, exit, gain energy, pitch back, come back into the fight. And uh, that is how we used to do it. Uh, we we also did a lot of IR BVR with um, these the, these in these aircraft, which is um, a heater, which is um, a sidewinder, and on the other side there was a BVR technology. So uh, within vi visual range and BVR technology, how do we fight in in in, in in that circumstance, mm -hmm. we, we practice a lot with the F-16 as well. So we did a lot of uh, a lot of flying with the Viper. Yeah. So would you uh, like as a Mirage team and then the F-16? Was the cross notes there? Did you uh, interact on a weekly basis, or how did that work? Well, it was um, it was a lot to do with the um, syllabi that we were going through. Uh, right. There is a specific cyclic training that we have and that cyclic training indicates that we have to fly certain types of sorties every year um, so within exercises specifically we used to do a lot of DACT other than that we used to do DACT in the cyclic training as well so it was it was um, it was heartening um, at times uh, once um, we were able to um, win a fight as well it's not that every time the viper shot us down we there were times once we were able to play our game plan and used to get a shot of the f-16 so that was one few and far between but there as well